Live and on demand from the WNY News Now studios in downtown Jamestown, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now on this Wednesday. I'm Justin Gould. And I'm Matt Hummel. Happening now, a house destroyed by fire here in the city of Jamestown likely be torn down. Plus, a Cattaraugus County woman is facing animal neglect charges. But first, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter is here with a live look at our weather. Hey, Dakota. Hey, Justin and Matt, and happy Wednesday. Halfway through the week already. And we'll take a look at First Defense Doppler. This is not rain you see here. This is just a bunch of radar garbage. Uh, it's mainly just a bunch of, I think, dust and birds and bugs in the atmosphere the radar is picking up. So today should be mainly dry. We don't have any rain today compared to what we had yesterday. But there will be some more stubborn cloudiness. You can see it here on the satellite imagery. The farther south you go, the more cloudier it'll be. So I think maybe partly sunny skies. There may be a chance for mostly sunny skies the farther north you go. But obviously, once you get farther south, you'll be stuck in a little bit more of a cloud deck uh, as we go throughout the afternoon. Check on the pollens here. It's that ragweed pollen still uh, running in the moderate category. So that's your main culprit if you've been having allergy problems such as myself. Hour by hour here for the temperatures. Temperatures should at least go into the lower to mid 70s uh, through the afternoon. Then uh, the temperatures will actually dip back into the 50s tonight. A, clear, a, a, a much more comfortable night for sleeping. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. Back to you, Justin and Matt. All righty, Dakota. Thank you very much. Our top story a house destroyed by fire early this morning will likely be torn down in an emergency demolition later on in the day. City of Jamestown Director of Development Vince DeJoy says his department will be working with fire officials to develop a plan to bring down the single-family home at 618 Pine Street. They're still working on the fire. They haven't been able to put it out. That's one of the reasons we need emergency demolition, not only because the structure is severely compromised, the roof and part of the wall structure, but um, it needs to come down. We can't have a, a hulk, you know, a, basically a burned out hulk. A month from now, there'll be kids coming to school here. So um, we're doing all that we can to ensure public safety. Now, DeJoy said the homeowner just put in a new roof there. As of 9 a.m., fire crews were ripping into that roof to try to knock down the blaze. One of the homeowner's neighbors ran to calls of help just before 6.30 a.m. as fire engulfed the building. I came out to go walk down to the store, and she was out here yelling for help. So I ran up, got my phone, and called 911. It's coming out both sides all the way up to the top. I was worried, you know, that there might be someone else in the house or the other house is catching on fire. Yeah. So. Now, DeJoy said the demolition will likely take place later this afternoon after utilities are shut off and a contractor can be obtained. Rubble then will likely sit at the site until proper cleanup can take place. The Red Cross is also now on scene to assist the homeowner Crews responded there shortly before 6.30 a.m. No injuries, thankfully, reported. The Cattaraugus County Sheriff's Office said that it says they arrested a woman on a warrant from Town of Little Valley Court containing animal abuse charges. That was back uh, earlier this month at the Cattaraugus County Probation Department in Salamanca. 42-year-old Crystal Benson of Little Valley was charged with neglect of an impounded animal and failure to provide sustenance. Benson was arraigned in town of Salamanca Court and released to appear in the town of Little Valley Court at a later date. She was reportedly turned over to the Olean Police Department for a separate warrant that had been issued from their office. And the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office says an Orchard Park man was arrested following an investigation into a July 18th report of a stolen purse at the Bemis Point Golf Course. 58-year-old Howard Barco was reportedly identified as the suspect after multiple agencies assisted in the sheriff's investigation. Similar thefts were reportedly occurring in Pennsylvania and Ohio, according to police. Deputies say a warrant was issued for Barco, and he was located in the town of Hamburg. He was transported to Chautauqua County Jail for arraignment via the centralized arraignment program on the charge of fourth-degree grand larceny. Erie's fire chief says that the city was not aware of the existence of a daycare where five children died in a blaze over the weekend. Chief Guy Santone says that there are two reasons why the city did not know of the daycare's existence. The city was not aware that this daycare was here. 
Uh, any daycares that were permitted prior to 2004 were permitted through the state. Anything after that, they have to be permitted through the city. Now, there's two loopholes. Um, one is that when the state permits it before 2004, they don't have to notify the local authorities. So their inspection company is DHS, mm -hmm. Department of Human Services. The other loophole is when they inspect, they basically inspect just for cleanliness. They don't inspect for smoke detectors or fire extinguishers or anything of that nature. Now, fire officials say the children who died ranged in ages from eight months to eight years old, and four of them were siblings. The fire broke out just after 1 a.m. Sunday morning. And investigators say the daycare had no smoke detectors, except for one in the attic. They say that if there had been the proper number of detectors, most, if not all, of the victims would have survived. Well, good Wednesday to all of you. Thanks for joining us here on uh, WNY News Now. Yeah. yeah, it seems like that fire, um, you know, just adds, absolutely a tragedy there mm -hmm. in Erie, Pennsylvania. Our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who was affected. And uh, to the woman here in the city of Jamestown, more fortunate that no lives were lost absolutely. in this morning's place, but that certainly a number of uh, uh, damage uh, is caused mm -hmm. to this home here. Um, and certainly, I know D D Vince DeJoy telling our reporters on scene there, he's the director of development for Jamestown, that this roof was just replaced. Yeah. Neighbors saying this woman rehabbing this home and doing a good job of trying to clean it up, and now this. Um, still, at this hour, we don't know what caused that fire, but um, you know, bringing people out into that neighborhood right off of uh, Route 60 there um, mm -hmm. on Main Street and uh, near Love School, certainly crews uh, are going to have a, little, a lot of cleanup there and then eventually the destruction of this home. And Matt, I was talking to one woman when I was there with, with our uh, coverage team this morning, um, and she was uh, the neighbor, and she was so shocked to see such a tragedy, mm -hmm. but you know, the, just it's so unbearable is what, what we both agreed on is the fact that something like this were to happen, like how do you cope with this? And unfortunately, it seems like it, it could be any one of us. That's right. And, you know, it just it goes to remind you to, you know, be thankful for the little things because you never know what's going to happen. And right. I mean, that just proved it right there. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, certainly, you know, again, our thoughts and prayers are mm -hmm. out with the, the homeowner and the people um, in, in her life and uh, to first responders as well for doing a good job there um, at that scene and uh, making sure that, you know, thankfully everyone is uh, safe. Mm -hmm. uh, as well. So, uh, hello to Wendy. Hopefully, you are doing well. David, good to see you. Thank you uh, so much for uh, tuning in today, and uh, Cindy here as well. Be sure to drop your name in the comments and uh, let us know what you think of these uh, stories as we uh, roll along throughout the newscast. Coming up, a warning for dog owners after toxic algae was suspected in the deaths of four pets in two states. But for students who have avoided vaccines, they're waiting to learn what their academic future holds. Dakota. And we will take a look at uh, the SkyVision camera network, which is on the uh, main graphic system, if we can show that. Uh, that'll be a look over Erie, and uh, there we go. You can see the clouds overhead, a few stubborn clouds across Northwest PA in the southern tier, but uh, it should be dry for, their, for today. We'll talk about the next rain chances coming up as WNY News Now continues in a minute. Don't go away. Live and on demand, you're watching WNY News Now. Now open in downtown Jamestown, Pearl City Hops, Restaurant and Tavern. I have some real old-timey dishes on there that I'm just giving new life to. Like There's a shepherd's pie on there that's going to have some bison in it, you know, real thick hearty gravy. Um, then I'm also doing beer flights. We're pairing it with a set of sliders a set of tacos and a set of mini rolls. So everything's gonna have its own pair so you can get a taste of a little bit of everything and all the beers. We don't wanna be known as the restaurant in the hotel. We wanna be known as Pearl City Hops. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. 
want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. And happening now, New York students who haven't been vaccinated against measles and other diseases are waiting to hear if they can go back to school. The state requires that all students be vaccinated, but until recently made an exception for those whose parents objected on religious grounds. Some of those parents are now challenging the change in court, saying it will keep 26,000 children out of school and daycare. Today, lawyers from the state and Children's Health Defense will argue the issue for a judge in Albany. Lawmakers did away with the non-medical exemptions in June following the biggest measles outbreak in more than 25 years. More than 1,000 cases have been confirmed in New York. A well, coalition of 13 attorney generals filed an ACMAS brief Monday seeking to uphold the U.S. Court of Appeals ruling that held the states and localities can impose certain types of firearm regulations when they are substantially related to an important government objective such as the protection of citizens. The suit challenged regulations in New York City enacting restrictions the transport of firearms held under a premise license unless the firearms were unloaded, locked, and transported separately from ammunition and being transported to firearm ranges within the city. Now, the coalition argues that the Second Amendment right to bear arms does not prevent the state and localities from enacting laws that protect the safety of the residents. The Acumas brief was prepared by members of J Attorney, New York State's Attorney General's Office, including Solicitor General Barbara Underwood. Now, for more, you can visit our website at wnynewsnow.com and stay in the know by downloading our mobile app. A new study suggests that social media use may harm teenagers' mental health by increasing exposure to bullying and reducing sleep and exercise time. Scientists conducted multiple interviews with almost 10,000 teenagers in England between the ages of 13 and 16. The teens reported the frequency with which they checked or used social media more than three times daily was considered very frequent. The researchers found that in both sexes, very frequent social media use was associated with greater psychological distress. The results indicated that social media itself really isn't the problem. Instead, it's frequent social media use that exposes young people to more harmful content. It can also get in the way of activities that have a positive impact on mental health, like sleeping and exercising. The research was published yesterday in the journal The Lancet Child and Adolescent Health. Well, a warning for dog owners after toxic algae is suspected in the death of four pets in two states. That algae spotted here in Chautauqua Lake as well. Mandy Gaithner with ways to spot the danger in today's Health Minute. It was supposed to be a doggy play date, but within hours of leaving a Wilmington, North Carolina pond, the owners say each pet died. Blue-green algae suspected of poisoning them. The harmful algae can bloom anywhere in the U.S. in both fresh and marine waters, as well as backyard pools and more, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. The toxic algae can be green, blue, red, or brown and look like foam or scum on the surface of water. Often it smells bad but may attract animals. If you spot the algae, leave the area. Don't let your dog drink or play in the water. If your dog has already been exposed, rinse the animal immediately in fresh, clean water, wearing gloves to protect yourself as well. The toxins are also dangerous to humans. Symptoms caused by toxic algae exposure can begin within 15 minutes or take several days and include diarrhea or vomiting, weakness or staggering, drooling, difficulty breathing, and seizures, according to the EPA. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. All right, Mandy. Well, thank you. In order for the dangerous algae to grow, it needs sunlight. 
Slow moving water and nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, Matt, the EPA tells us that climate change might lead to stronger and more frequent algae blooms, the source of them here in Chautauqua County generally are runoff from farms. So um, certainly, yeah, uh, big, big danger to humans and to furry friends as well, Absolutely. which I think sometimes maybe get on the back burner because mm -hmm. you think, oh, dogs are not humans, mm -hmm. they can't get sick, but... Unfortunately, in this case, they can. Yeah, I mean, I, and I didn't even realize that, to be honest, until yeah. that report. So uh, certainly be careful out there, especially if you live near the lake or you frequent the lake right. a lot. And then I think, you know, certainly for our pups, like, mm -hmm. they love going to the lake. You know, love, you know, throwing the balls around, and sometimes they end up in the water, and there goes the dog, yep. right? Yep. You know, yep. So it's, it's certainly, I think, something to keep an eye on. And I guess just make sure that if you're going to some of these places, mm -hmm. that if you are by the water you know make sure that there is no yeah. algae blooms in there Absolutely. and if there are you know you could always stay ashore mm -hmm. and you know things like that That's so right. certainly common sense there but uh, i think a lot of people maybe don't even know still about mm -hmm. it even though i think it's talked talked about quite yeah. a bit in the media yeah. especially during the summer mm -hmm. but you know even then it's like out of the hundreds of thousands of people out there it's like do do we all really know? Like, you don't know about it until Correct. you know about it. Correct. You know? Like, even in the news sometimes, my family and I joke, I don't know about, like, a lot of stuff going mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. unless it's in the news. Yep. Oh, which yeah. Is so ironic, honestly. <laughs> but what are you going to do? You better either way. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Hopefully you are having a good day and enjoying some of the beautiful weather Absolutely. out there because it is uh, pretty nice outside. Coming up next... Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter, he's standing by live with a look at our weather and whether this nice weather will continue. And later on, guess what? Olive Garden is offering a delicious deal. You're not going to want to miss out on that. Details ahead as news now continues. Justin and pasta equals happiness. <laughs> Extra, extra, read all about it. Not tomorrow, but right now on the WNY News Now mobile app. Follow local news as it happens. Top story of Forestville man's weather video has gone viral. And stay informed with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. Our Matt Hummel is standing by live outside of Chautauqua County Court with more on this case. Matt, good afternoon to you. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. First Defense Weather, the Southern Tier's only live and local weather source. Now, here's Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. And welcome back. Wanted to start off with a kind of a depressing graphic. Uh, once again, we're losing sunset time. So this is what the sunset's going to be at the end of this month at 7.52. So, eh, that's still not bad. But as we go into September, at the end of September, sunset goes down to 6.59. Halloween, it's 6.11. And uh, at the end of November, it is 4.46 in the afternoon. Yes, we're losing. So look at this. By the time we go from the end of this month into the end of next month, we've lost about an hour of daylight. So mm, that'll continue until December. It's towards Christmas time when we actually start gaining daylight again. High temperatures yesterday, 78 in Dunkirk, 79 over in Erie, 73 in Olean and 80 in Buffalo. So not a bad day, but we did have a few of those rain showers uh, that moved through yesterday. Here's what's coming up. A fantastic day today. So get out and enjoy the afternoon because it's going to be nice. Now, as we head into tonight, we will see a brief dip in humidity tonight, but it actually comes back as we go into uh, Thursday. Cool and crisp overnight. 
overnight uh, as we drop the humidity. And then uh, the humidity comes back big time as we go into the weekend. And of course, the humidity will help fuel uh, some showers and storms across the area both weekend days. You can see it here on the Comfort Index. This is where we're going to be for the afternoon around, you know, in this uh, humid range. It actually dips uh, below this tonight, but it actually starts to go up again as we go into Thursday and Friday. And uh, here's the weekend for you. You'll see we'll be back in that muggy range uh, for the dew point temperatures once again. Now let's take a look at uh, the uh, temperatures here. We'll show you where we're going for the weekend here. So the next couple of days, really not bad. This is almost around average, a little bit cooler, but whoop, over the weekend we go, we go back into the 60s and likely upper 60s by the time uh, we go into Saturday. Here's a live look downtown. You can see just a few of the clouds hanging around downtown, but I mentioned this at the top. This is the big deal. It's the dew point number. Uh, it's uh, currently downtown. It's at uh, 63 degrees. So we're going to see that kind of hover around the lower 60s today. But again, that reef, but again, it's only going to be a short, uh, a short little break of the humidity. Nothing really going on on the radar on the wide view because here's what's happening. We have a high pressure ridge that's moved in. This is ultimately going to move out tomorrow and we will see the chance for a few more showers and storms start to come in. We'll show it to you here on future scan. The model tries to spit up a few rain showers across the southern tier. It's not going to happen this afternoon. Now tonight should be mainly dry early tomorrow morning. There could be a little isolated shower down across the southern tier. But as we get into tomorrow afternoon, you can see the model will start to paint a few of these showers and storms. I think this model is kind of underdoing some of the activity. I think it'll be a little bit more widespread than this, but uh, you will see the chance for a few showers and storms in the afternoon. Some of them could contain some gusty winds and maybe some brief uh, and uh, or a brief or brief gusty winds and uh, some heavy rainfall uh, as we go throughout the day as well. Zone forecast will start at uh, the Lake Erie shoreline first today. Temperatures here upper 70s, maybe 80 uh, around Erie. A nice day with a little bit lower humidity. It's not going to be as humid as it was yesterday. Eastward into the valleys and mountains here, maybe upper 70s here, maybe Warren, uh, maybe flirting with 80 degrees. Partial sunshine, but a nice afternoon. Uh, you know, the sun. Isn't it the Beatles? I can't think of the name of that song at the moment. Next seven days coming up, and uh, you can see here 78 tomorrow, 77 on Friday. Both of those days, a chance for... Um, afternoon showers and storms. Here comes the humidity Friday through Sunday and maybe upper six, uh, maybe upper 80s on uh, Sunday and uh, the, the uh, temperatures remain into the 80s for next week. Sports is next. Do not go in. Invest in your business or cause by letting the marketing gurus at WNY News Now and WNY Media Company grow your business. Purchase an ad much like the one you are watching now on WNY News Now's daily show, News Now at Noon, WNYNewsNow.com, or our brand new mobile app. And then get feedback from our marketing experts and fans alike. And finally, watch your business grow. As an added bonus, community partners' messages were run not only on our scheduled programming, but on weather alerts and breaking news as well. Plus, messages are shared on WNY Sports Now programming. Anything from a live local basketball game to the Phone Zone Sports Desk. Become part of our family today. And contact us right now. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at PhoneZoneShop.com. Happy Hump Day, sports fans, and welcome back to WNY News Now. I'm Norm Rodriguez with a look at sports. On Thursday night at 6.30, the City of Jamestown Parks, Recreation, and Conservation Co-Ed Softball League will have a playoff game to be played. The game will be played at Danielson Park. Should a game not be needed to be played on the 22nd, this will be the final game of the season. The Buffalo Sabres will be hosting a fan fest this Saturday. 
going on from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. This fan fest will be to celebrate the Buffalo Sabres' 50th season in the NHL. Both current and former Buffalo Sabres players will be in attendance, which will include Jeff Skinner, Rasmus Dahlin, as well as French Connection players Gilbert Perrault and Rene Robert. More information on the Buffalo Sabres Fan Fest can be found on the Buffalo Sabres team website. This afternoon with a 105 first pitch, the New York Yankees will conclude their four-game road series versus the Baltimore Orioles. Winners of four in a row, and with an 80-41 and 41 record, the Yanks have a nine-game lead over the Tampa Bay Rays for first place in the AL East. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Baltimore has lost three straight and are in last place with a 39-81 and 81 record, the second-worst record in the league behind the Detroit Tigers, who are 35-81. and 81. J.A. Happ will get the starting call for New York against Baltimore starting pitcher Dylan Bundy. The game will be televised on the Yes Network. That's it for sports today. Justin and Matt, back to you. All righty, Norm. Thank you for making me not feel as bad about my pirates. <laughs> <laughs> and forget some unlimited soup and salad. What about some pasta for a lifetime? I can tell you I'm certainly going forward to that. That's what Olive Garden is offering with its new deal. The Italian restaurant chain says it's introducing a lifetime pasta pass tomorrow. The pass includes a lifetime of unlimited servings of any pasta bowl, along with unlimited soup or salad and breadsticks. The deal is an upgrade to Olive Garden's never-ending pasta pass. And the never-ending pass is $100, and the first 50 people who buy those will be able to opt into the lifetime pass, but that's going to cost you an extra $400. Both go on sale at 2 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. And I'm here with two gentlemen... Who really love pasta. Man, I should <laughs> seriously think about that. You have no chance in hell of, oh, of, of winning. You're right, though. You don't. Because everybody and their brother people, is going to be on that you website. Know, you know, it's just like, you know, Apple's um, uh, thing that they hold uh, in the fall, the... Um, uh, the uh, big conference that they hold yeah. um, every year in the spring. Yeah. It's like, you know, it used to be they can only have so many people, like 5,000 people, I think is the maximum people mm. they can have at the conference, right. like in person. And one year, the tickets for it sold out within like 10 seconds. Right. 5,000 tickets in 10 50 seconds. 50 slots for everybody in the world. I, I, I Good luck to you. I, I personally... It'd be I, cool, though. I mean, now, I'm living yeah. pasta. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I mean, I, I mean, I personally think they should go to like a lottery uh, thing yeah. where it's really like, you know, up. you register and then mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough to win, then you pay the right. $400 right. for yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, that would I be like fair. That. Because like to it. me, that Next seems time, more I fair. Mm -hmm. Next time, I guess. Hopefully this doesn't put them out of business. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. I know people Watch the website who, crash. Right, right. Maybe. I know people Amazon Prime Day, anybody? Who would eat pasta every day of their life. Myself included. Yeah. Yeah, me too. You know what is possible, though? Hmm. Better chance in hell. That seven-day forecast. Oh, yeah. Yes. Always going to look good. But so, it... <laughs> so not a bad day this afternoon. <laughs> Temperatures into the lower to mid-70s through the day. Partial sunshine. The more, uh, actually, the farther north you go, the better chance you have for seeing uh, more sunshine. Here comes that seven-day. And uh, the humidity backs off tonight, but it comes right back tomorrow. And uh, we may be back into the upper 80s on Sunday. And again, with the humidity chance for a few afternoon showers and storms. And looks like the 80s stick around until early next week. Hey, not bad forecast there, Dakota. Thank you very much. Well, good luck on your pasta search yeah <laughs> try to get it uh that's it for us today of course news 24 7 at wnynewsnow.com and on our mobile app you can download it right now on the apple app store and google play store we leave you with a live look from our friends in warren pennsylvania howdy howdy hopefully you are having a good day out there we'll see you back here tomorrow